welcome back to our series of interviews with Euro members across the world. It's a great pleasure today to introduce you to Pauline Sun, Director of Operations and Sales at Expat Management Group, and Dominic Conan, who's the partner and co-founder. Um, it's really nice to see you. We should be seeing each other very soon in Seville, but clearly it's not going to happen. So Zoom is a good substitute. Um, tell me, um, where, where are you at? Well, I know you're in the Netherlands, but what, what's happening right now in the Netherlands? Dominic, you'd like to start? Yes, I'll start off. Thank you. Well, first of all, Dom, thank you for uh, 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 allowing us to have you on your interview sessions. Uh, um, we've, they've, they've been very insightful uh, to do to get a view of all, all the partners around the world uh, uh, going through this crisis. Um, so let me uh, just uh, uh, first start off here in, in, uh, in, in the Netherlands, where our main office is in Amsterdam. It's, uh, um, well, it's, it's, it's what we call in the Netherlands, we, uh, we have a, a smart lockdown uh, now. So a, a smart lockdown, meaning oh. that it's not a rigid system as a lot of European countries have, uh, meaning that the prime minister here uh, wants us to have a huge responsibility on us. To, uh, to stop or slow down the spread of the virus. Um, as such, um, the system is not as rigid uh, as in other countries, so grocery stores are open, bakeries, supermarkets are open, even hardware stores and other non-food uh, non shops are open. So um, uh, as long as, as we can manage uh, uh, social distancing, distancing, a lot of things are still, uh, 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 well, business as usual, so to speak. Um, also mean that we can go to parks, we can go for a walk or uh, take a bike ride. I mean, I couldn't imagine that that Dutch government would take away our bikes, by the way. So that <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just to give you an, just give you a general view on 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 what's 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 going on, what's still open. Uh, nonetheless, and I think Pauline will also uh, touch up on that in a minute, is that uh, schools are still closed, bars and restaurants, uh, and those other businesses that require you know touching, uh, like hairdressers, beauticians, etc., they are closed. Uh, and uh, well can't work right now yeah yeah i think that the main uh, main three uh, rules we need to follow is that they they advise us to stay as much as home as possible um, do not work in an office if if possible so try to, to work at home obviously there are some professions that it's not possible uh, and then the other one is keep 1.5 meters distance from each other and and that is that's what you see in our daily life um, that whatever we do, we try to keep the one, one and a half meters distance. Um, and as a result of that, some things are closed, like schools, it's impossible to keep the distance, but some, in some locations you can keep the distance and then it's okay. Um, as, as Dominique is saying, we, we are allowed to, to be outside, but they encourage us to do it as, 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 as little as possible. And then only with two people together. So we're not allowed to group. So we can't walk around with, with, uh, with eight people, or you are with your own family. So parents and kids, they can stick together, but then uh, other, sp other people can't join if the group becomes bigger than two persons. But we can go outside, so we think we're very lucky if we compare ourselves to some other countries, then uh, um, we can go every day to the grocery store if we like, uh, but we, you do it by yourself, you're not going together with someone, and then it's all okay. Okay, that's so interesting. I love the fact that they called it a smart lockdown, and I think we're just we're going to do some cross cultural research on this. But it's very interesting how, you know, the Netherlands has always been a real champion of individual human rights. You know, right back in your history, and that that has been left to the individual to to be guided by the government. But the guidance is is for you to enforce, and the, that's that's great. And how how has that impacted, as far as you know, at the moment on? differences in, in, in infection rates and, and people you know, not being well. Right, yeah. Pauline, you want to take this? Yeah, I'd love to, yeah. Yeah, so actually we're doing good. Um, we, um, so our first, uh, our first uh, uh, infected person was on the 27th of February. So that's about two months ago now, almost yeah. exactly two months ago. Uh, in the beginning, the number increased very rapidly and, and obviously, like, like in other countries, uh, everybody was very worried that the hospitals would not be able to, uh, to treat the people that were infected. Uh, we never reached that level that they were up to their maximum and, um, and every day we, we see the number of people infected uh, um, getting less. Also, people that pass away are getting less, so we're doing well. So they, we have like a two weekly update from our prime minister, uh, Mark Rutte, and um, they now uh, announced last week that we can 
uh, we have less strict measures. Um, yeah, we can give a few examples of those. Maybe we'll do that later. Um, but um, it's getting uh, less strict now, so it, it is working. And, and it's interesting that you say that, Dominic, because our, our prime minister also said we are we're that type of country. We want to give you some space, uh, take your own responsibility, because that's what we try to be as Dutch. So uh, uh, show us that you can have the responsibility and behave. And I think we all did pretty well. So um, um, we, we're in actually the line is going up again. So that, that's really great. Now, of course, we don't know how long it's going to last, <laughs> but um, we are going up. It is. It's very interesting. I was talking to Lena Vector and Johanna Lennartsen from Sweden last week, and also left hand. And it's interesting how you know Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, Finland, they took a much, much more similar approach to you guys in the Netherlands. That you know, it's about individual responsibility. And and you know, from your point of view, the people are doing what they're being asked to do. They do, but the police will give you a fine eh? if if they if they see young people grouping together. Um, I think they pay about four hundred euros per person right. as a fine. Yeah, so they're, they're very strict on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, so uh, there is a penalty if you don't listen. Uh, and that's a hard and fast rule. Just, uh, a lot of other stuff is advisory, but the two people that's a hard rule, and it's the same in the UK. But it's just interesting again, uh, you know, uh, talking to colleagues in Spain and our vice president. Uh, Susanna Bourne, and she was saying, you can uh, up until just now, I'm sure you've seen this on the news, you could only go out um, if you if you had a dog that you had to walk. And she said in her building, the dogs are all exhausted because people are taking <laughs> that like 20 times a day. They're getting these walks for everybody. Yeah. But um, so tell me how, when this this began on the at the end of February for you, um, how how quickly did this come in and how, how did you have to react as, a, as an organization? Right, yeah. So, um, it, uh, obviously, we saw some signs coming in from, from uh, 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 well, first of all, in Asia and then later on in, in, in Italy. Then we, we already knew that, okay, guys, this is going to, you know, this is going to infect us one way or another sooner or later. Um, so, we saw that also from a business uh, perspective that, uh, well, you have some clients who, uh, who uh, drop on, 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 on moves. Business travel is getting less and less. Uh, so yeah, we, we noticed that we would have to, uh, that at some point, uh, um, the Netherlands, but also we as an organization, uh, would have to deal with this, uh, uh, with this, with this crisis. Um, I think that uh, being in the, in the services sector, that we uh, could manage fairly quickly. It's not that we have a huge warehouse with products, you know, that, uh, that, yeah. that uh, will go back quickly, these type of things. So it's just, you know, a lot of emailing, <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, digital uh, paperwork that we manage uh, nowadays. So um, maybe that also goes into a little bit into, into, into the questions that you normally ask is that is, uh, we, we, uh, uh, we can fairly adapt to it, meaning that we can all work from home. Uh, we only go to office once in a while, just one of us to, uh, to pick up the post, those type of things. And, and, in, that, and, and in that moment, the, the office is actually really safe space because there's no one there, so you can't really be affected. <laughs> uh, uh, but other than that, we are, as Pauline said, we are encouraged to work from home, and that's, and that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, um, was that, like you say, you, you were fairly geared up for that already. You were cloud-based and your systems were accessible remotely. Did you have to, I mean, we as an organization, and we're very small, you're a much, much bigger organization than we are, many more people. It's suddenly, it was IT people who said, you do realize your home networks are nowhere near as secure as your networks in your office, and we need to take a look at that. Did you have a similar kind of dialogue? Yes, we did, but not, uh, uh, not to the extent that it poses a problem. Um, we, uh, we, ha we have an external, uh, we have our own server, so we don't work in the cloud. So a little bit technical though, but meaning that we, if we can find a safe uh, connection with our server, then it's fine. So we don't need to be, uh, 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 it, it's not too much, uh, much of a problem if you, if you have a, a very strong or just a regular internet connection at home, yeah. basically. Right. Interesting. And how are your teams coping with, with being remote? Like you say, you, when you go into the office, there's nobody else there, we're the same, just go to pick up the post. <laughs> are they coping okay? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think uh, everybody is okay, and, and um, yeah, we have lots of go-to meetings. We use go-to as a system, 
and we all think it's pretty time consuming to, <laughs> to have all those mute, meetings but i think um we all we all feel the same that way but it's fantastic that it, that it exists that you have the technical possibility to see each other uh, we also include some meetings just to socialize together instead of only talk about work um, because you really lose contact uh, the nice contact with your colleagues um, and well nobody's depressed from our team i think we're all doing fine um, and we we are flexible because obviously the, the normal work is, is getting less but um, everybody's kind of creatively thinking you know how can we uh, get the best out of this period and um, so we're really working hard on other projects uh, and that's also very motivating so um, so we make new teams and then we have our go to meetings with those teams um, it's, it's fine uh, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I know for sure that if, if in a couple of weeks we hopefully can go back in the office everybody will be really really happy um, <laughs> yes, absolutely. But, yeah. but it's okay it's okay because we're not stuck in the house also and that helps it's uh, compared oh, to some other countries I, yeah. and if I may add to that Dominic um, we see also a, 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 uh, a quite a difference in the type of work that we still have, actually. So um, I wanted um, to ask about that. Yeah, yeah. So, so for your information, we, we have we have a relocation department that that is uh, uh, that Pauline is in charge of, and we also have a huge immigration department uh, working on on immigration uh, formalities. And we we see quite a difference in the workload that we have uh, due to this uh, uh, Corona crisis going on right now in that in uh, the, the relocation, it's, it's getting less and less, uh, meaning that I mean, at some point we need to be inventive. Uh, Pauline already said we're doing additional projects or these tasks that you never really want to do because you don't have time, but now we do. Um, but in the, immigra in the immigration side, we see something that is, for me as an immigration lawyer, quite um, fascinating or interesting, though, is that because we have Schengen rules that are uh, applicable in the Netherlands, but we also have national uh, 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 border rules, so to speak, and they are completely mixed up right now due to this whole crisis, um, which gives us the opportunity um, to work with our uh, corporate clients and invent, you know, alternative solutions to get them in the country. Uh, nonetheless, um, to give you a, a, a an example now is that um, uh, due to the due to the crisis, uh, the Schengen uh, area has been closed for non-essential travels, mm -hmm. as we all may know until the 15th of, uh, of May at least. Um, but normally within the Schengen area, uh, there is free travel. Uh, so there's no border checks and everything. However, there are a number of countries uh, that, had, had, that have imposed border checks uh, or have closed the borders at all. For instance, Belgium, France, these type of countries, it's, complete, it's very difficult to get into, in, into those countries. So in addition to that, we have uh, embassies and consulates worldwide where uh, uh, people who get residence permits for the Netherlands, they would like to come here. They have to go to the embassies. Uh, they can't anymore because they're closed. But if they, if they manage to get to these appointments before it was actually closed, they can still fly in. But, so so, so, so then, then they can fly in. But for instance, Americans or, or, or uh, Canadians, Australians who never need an embassy process, they can't come on come in even though when there is a residence from waiting for them in the Netherlands so it's completely turn around you know the other way around yeah, yeah. wow and yeah. in addition to that in in the Schengen zone we still have immigration going on however because of these borders are being closed you have to think of of, of creative routes to get into the Netherlands so for instance we have we have, we have a, a couple of moves from from from, from Switzerland uh, to mm -hmm. the Netherlands. And they're not going to take the plane they're going to take the car and but we had to advise them to go via Germany because they couldn't enter France and Belgium. So, right. so we have to think on a whole new level now. So it's, just, it's unprecedented since uh, after the Second World War, we didn't have these type of things. So it's really new for us. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it gets us, uh, you know, we have to be on the top of our game on that one. So we get a lot of, next to the end-to-end -end, end -end immigration work, we get a lot of advisory work on, you know, how to get creative and how to get them into the country nonetheless. That's really interesting because, again, I mean, you're really working as consultative partners with your corporate clients on things like that because the complexities are just huge. I mean, I was talking to um, Stéphane Compin from uh, Luxembourg and he was saying, because he lives in France, like loads of people who work in Luxembourg, they either live in Belgium or France, of course, the borders are closed. He has five permits, I think, to be able to get to his office. <laughs> yeah. And that kind of thing, I mean, from the point of view of you know, there's no way a corporation would be, a, be equipped to be able to deal with that. You are their consulting partner. So, you know, I can imagine you've been pretty busy, actually. 
Yes, uh, very busy. Uh, and in addition to that, also we get a lot of in-country immigration is still going on. Uh, think about uh, uh, people who are laid off, immigrants that are laid off, they need to leave, but they can't, they can't leave. How do you deal with that? So are they then illegal here? Do they get a fine? Are they put on a plane? Where to? It's, you know, we get a lot of new problems for us as immigration lawyers to think about what, what, what you can do with that. So it's, in that sense, it's interesting uh, to, uh, to see this. And from the, in the, from the point of view of, the, of the, the government of the Netherlands has, I mean, like you say, we think things like someone's permit running out, they're about to become non-compliant in their immigration status. Is the government saying, okay, we'll, we'll just let that slide for a bit, or do you still have to go through uh, an immigration process that's complex? Well, yes. So what we see, especially with the immigration uh, uh, authorities in the Netherlands, they are... Uh, they are mainly focused on uh, executing the policies of the government, but sure. immigration is only immigration is not on their you know priority list right now. So, right. so what we so what we do as 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 a, uh, as a consultancy with with our uh, uh, with our other colleagues in, in in the branch, we we have to push the immigration authorities for an answer all the time. So we have oh, we have this case. What can we do about it? And then we have to sometimes wait a few weeks to get an answer because they're not you know. They're dealing with a crisis as well, and they're not yeah. really prepared to, to give you the answers on that one straight away. So Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating. But early on in these interviews, I talked with Marie O'Neill and Adrian Hopkins in, uh, in Dubai, and they were saying that basically the government of the Emirates just said, okay, for the time being, it's, it's all fine, because we've got other things yeah. we need to think about. You just, <laughs> if your immigration status is as it was and it's run out, it'll just continue now. Uh, whether that's changing or not, I don't know. And obviously, as time has moved on, change so you just mentioned so is um is is there any air movement i mean is skipple having any flights coming in and out or just essential or just cargo or what's happening because again one of the world's great aviation hubs yeah uh i don't know the exact percentage but, but like obviously the, the majority has been cancelled but there, there are still flights um and um like for example, like two days ago, we had one flight uh, from Morocco bringing people who were stuck in Morocco. Uh, that was one flight allowed to fly in to bring the first group of people. So it, it, it's very restricted. But there are some flights, and it's from some destinations that that, that still goes on. Um, um, uh, but but um, just a few compared to what, what they normally do. I'm not sure. Dominique, do you know more figures about that? What, what, what is happening at the airport? Yeah, I, th I think it's I think they're running on, on, on 10 or 20 percent maximum. Wow. Okay. Uh, but, but still, there are some flights coming in. Uh, and if you can prove that you are essential uh, uh, here, uh, that can be uh, you are a EU citizen, you uh, have a residence permit already, or these type of things, then you can, technically speaking, you can still enter. However, of course, there are different airlines, different policies as well. So you can be completely fine to enter the Netherlands, but then the the, the departing country doesn't really let you want to doesn't want to let uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. want to go. So these type of things that yeah, but yeah. in principle yeah, you still you can still come. <laughs> yeah, amazing. It's and it's just so this yeah. is so extraordinary. It's so different from country to country, and in what we always considered well, apart from Brexit, of course, that we always considered that there would be um, you know the, the total freedom of movement within the European Union, and for the first time in, in generation, that stopped. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you uh, what in terms of um, like any financial help or help for your employees or people who've been laid off, what, what's the situation in the Netherlands on that sort of thing? So I take it, yeah. yeah. So uh, mm. the Dutch government has uh, put in a, I mean, a massive relief plan. Uh, it has never seen before in, in, in modern, uh, modern Dutch history, uh, uh, outside the, the, any wars obviously. Uh, and they cover the first three months with only little requirements. And it includes uh, financial reliefs, uh, ex tax exemptions, or uh, support for self-employed individuals. Uh, so this is, it's, 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 it's huge. Uh, and and everyone, everyone's agreeing on that. They have never seen this before. Um, as such, um, there is also uh, a wide criticism, actually, on uh, a few huge multinational companies in the Netherlands. Uh, for you know, misusing these, uh, uh, misusing these, 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 these government. In addition to that, also seasoned workers they are in trouble because they measure the turnover um, that they had in January. But if you only have a restaurant, for example, during summer, like all the beach clubs and and uh, 
uh, or like the, 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 tulip, the tulip farms, for example, uh, they all make their turnover during summer and spring and have really no turnover in January. So they can't, if they take that as a measure, then uh, it doesn't work. So there, there are protests against that and hopefully that will be a solution because it's really not fair. Um, yeah, those right. people suffer most in this period because they have no income during the rest of the year. Yeah, it makes no sense. It has to be aggregated. I think a similar kind of thing did happen in the UK for people who are either self-employed or running businesses that were very seasonal. I, they have come up with a solution, but it's been quite complex and it's taken time. And in the meantime, people have, you know, real struggles. However, yeah. I've got to say, from the point of view of, you know, you guys being in the Netherlands, us being in the UK, we're so grateful that this happens from our governments. When you look at other countries like the US and Italy where that's not happening and and people yeah, really they really look after us, and it's amazing how much money they can reserve for this. That's the idea. That unbelievable. Is... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. It's really great to talk to you. Um, I'm I'm glad that things are, are opening up. That must there must be a real sort of sense of national ah, a bit now. I mean, cautiously, but people are feeling cautiously yeah. optimistic. Absolutely. At this moment, it's a spring holiday, but on the 12th of, uh, I'm looking at the day, the 11th of May, uh, the schools start taking, for 50% of the time, taking kids into school again. So if you talk about relief, I think that people with young children especially, they're going to be really excited to, uh, and also daycare centers, they take the kids for 50% of the time, and that will be really helpful. Uh, high schools, they start in June, because they plan to start in June. But all, all the time they need to look after this one and a half meters distance uh, rule. So how, how are they going to manage that? So that's why they only take half the kids to um, give them enough space. Yeah. Um, but it will improve. And I think a lot of people will be very, very happy when the gyms will open again. Uh, <laughs> that's the other crucial yeah. thing. We only have two crucial things. And restaurants and bars. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. I mean, basically normal life. No news yet about that. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. yeah. It's yeah. so extraordinary. I think I think we all uh, um, um, are, are very positive here. Also within 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 our firm here. I mean, um, I, I was talking to Pauline the other day that it is really surprising to see how many. Um, uh, how many uh, proposals we got for for uh, uh, well for, from potential corporate clients basically to to work with us? Uh, I think they all have suddenly have the time now to to do these type of yeah. things, <laughs> or uh, or they or they actually preparing for a and that's what we, that's actually something that we see quite a lot now is that they are um, preparing for uh, outsourcing mobility post Corona basically. So they build they're starting on their post Corona programs already. Yes. Um, yeah. So uh, it was very interesting, and that also gives you a positive feeling. So we're working on all these uh, tenders now, and 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 and, and it gives you a, a good feeling that well, you know, there there's a light, and then at some point we will go back to hopefully go back to a, to the to the new normal, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's so interesting. I think this thing, this whole question about hope, is so fundamental, and it's very interesting. Again, having done these interviews and you know, talking to you guys and saying, you know, the Netherlands is giving people deadlines and dates, and companies are reacting to that, people are responding. We still know you know, social distancing will be confusing. But in, in the UK, they're refusing to give us any dates. So we're still in that kind yeah. of like, what's happening? You know, No dates but, at all? Yeah, no? None at all. None Nothing? At all. Oh. Every day in our government briefings, they're saying, we're not going to do that until we okay. know where we are. We're not, there's three tests they have to fulfill before they will give any deadline. So, yeah. But it's, it's always lovely to talk to people where they've been given them, as we can hear. Yeah. What happened here too? Yeah. So thank you. Nice. It's been such a pleasure to talk to you both. Thank you so much. I'd love to come back to you in, in a few weeks of a month or so and see how we're all doing then and, and where we will that are. That's nice. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Well, Dominic, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to see you. And I'm sorry I won't see you next week in Seville, but. <laughs> Too bad. I really thank, enjoyed thank it,